This is Valley News Live at 5. In the Derek Chauvin murder trial, the prosecution called a medical expert as their first witness today, a pulmonologist whose testimony could prove devastating for the defense, who are seeking to prove that underlying health conditions and drug use contributed to the death of George Floyd. Camila Bernal is in Minneapolis with the latest from court. Mr. Floyd died from a low level of oxygen. Stark and chilling testimony from the prosecution's first witness on Thursday, a pulmonary expert from Chicago. The cause of the low level of oxygen was shallow breathing, small breaths. Dr. Martin Tobin, an unpaid expert brought in by the state of Minnesota, explaining how George Floyd's oxygen levels decreased sharply when Chauvin and the other officers were holding him down. He's turned prone on the street, that he has the handcuffs in place combined with the street, and then that he has a knee on his neck, and then that he has a knee on his back. Armed with an arsenal of graphics, charts, and marked up photos of the scene, Tobin faced and spoke directly to the jury during his testimony, breaking down complicated medical terms to explain why Floyd could not breathe in the prone position and how he ultimately died. With each breath, he has to try and fight against the street. He has to try and fight with the small volumes that he has. And then he has to try and lift up the officer's knee with each breath. In Minneapolis, Camila Bernal, Valley News Live. Chauvin's defense suggested Floyd said, I ate too many drugs, but the witnesses did not agree. Not only do we have more rain in the forecast, but some areas might see snow. And that's enough to put us on alert. Here's Hutch with a look at what's ahead. Hutch. Andrea, thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. Your drive time forecast looks pretty soggy. Look at Lakes Country, one to three inches for many just off to the east of the Red River Valley, including Parker's Prairie. Some portions of Otter Tail County reportedly upwards of four inches of rain throughout the event. Fargo, over half of an inch recorded here in the old rain gauge. Notice the heaviest of the showers are just west of the Red River Valley in southeast North Dakota, Richland County through central parts of Cass County. And then that meanders into northwest portions of Minnesota where Roseau and Kitson County seeing some of their first drops from this event. It's going to be windy tomorrow. Wind advisory out west. This is a very dry area and the fire danger will remain extremely high there. Temperatures this evening, 40s in the valley and east near uh, 55 to 60 out to the west. We have a first alert weather day that we have hoisted for Monday and Tuesday. Snow is in the forecast and shovelable snow for some. We'll have the latest in your forecast of this rain and the snow coming up in a moment. Okay, thanks Hutch. Fargo fire officials are asking people to be more careful, saying smoking materials continue to cause high dollar fires in the city. Take a look at this video. All of these fires were caused by cigarettes. In 2020, Fargo firefighters responded to 19 fires started by people not properly disposing of smoking materials, and they say this continues to be a trend in the first quarter of this year. Of all the fires the department responded to in 2020, 153 were accidental. The fire marshal says fires caused by smoking are always preventable. I have uh, cigarettes or smoking materials that kind of piles up over the winter or, or you know, maybe there was a flower pot and that was getting used. But the thing is that that, that pot over the whole winter is dried out and the plants died and that type of thing. So as that builds up, then comes spring, we get that the nice warm, dry air and that gives it that opportunity to, to cause a problem. Erickson says the best way to prevent these fires is to place the cigarette butts in a metal container or ashtray with sand in it. Soak the cigarette butt in water before throwing it out. Don't use a coffee container or potting soil because it is flammable and never throw a cigarette out the window. A toddler and her mother are recovering after a house fire in Verndale, Minnesota. The call came in around 930 last night that a home was on fire and a child was trapped upstairs. Crews rescued the one year old. She was airlifted to Minneapolis. The mother was also burned while trying to rescue her daughter. Governor Tim Walz announced today that Minnesota has administered more than 3 million COVID vaccine doses. The milestone comes exactly three weeks after the state announced 2 million doses administered on March 18th. Minnesota continues to lead the nation in doses administered.
And just a reminder for you, North Dakotans ages 16 and up can walk in and get their COVID shot today. All you have to do is head to the former Gordman's building at 5100 14th Avenue South in Fargo. They'll be giving out shots until 7 tonight. They do have the one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine available. If you're looking for more options to get your shots, use our VNL vaccine tracker. It's right on the home page of our website, or you can open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen, then tap the link that pops up. President Joe Biden, along with the vice president and attorney general, announced a half dozen executive actions aimed at combating gun violence across the nation. President Biden called gun violence in America an epidemic and an international embarrassment. He also urged Congress to act, calling on the Senate to take up House passed measures, closing background check loopholes. Whether Congress acts or not, I'm going to use all the resources at my disposal as president to keep the American people safe from gun violence. But there's much more that Congress can do to help that effort. And they can do it right now. The president also said Congress should pass the Violence Against Women Act to eliminate legal exemptions for gun manufacturers and ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. March was a record month for migrants crossing the southern border. According to the Biden administration, nearly 19,000 unaccompanied children crossed the U.S.-Mexico border in March. Monthly figures out today show March as a record, eclipsing May 2019, when more than 11,000 children crossed the border. In February 2021, more than 9,000 minors were received into U.S. custody. Students who are receiving lunch from the Barnesville school might not be getting it after all. Barnesville police say they're seeing an increase in people losing their coolers after leaving them at the end of their driveway for those school lunches. Police believe people coming to town for cleanup week are taking the coolers, thinking they're trash. They suggest attaching the cooler to a tree or a mailbox or making a sign letting people know what the cooler is used for. If you see wandering ferrets and snakes at Broadway Square this afternoon, don't be alarmed. Organizers say it's simply a fun new way to get animal lovers involved with the amazing animals at the Red River Zoo on National Zoo Day. Arya, the domestic ferret, and Monty, the ball python, are just a few of the animals you can check out. Exoskeletons and other animal artifacts will be on site for you to touch. The kids who are interested in studying animals can receive first-hand knowledge on how to get into the profession directly from the zookeepers and the veterinarians. If you want to be in a science or animal-related field, it's very competitive. So for the kids to get an idea of what they need in order to succeed in that career is early on is really advantageous to them. The event will run until 6 this evening at Broadway Square. That's the corner of Broadway and 2nd Avenue in downtown Fargo and the base of the Block 9 building. The event is free for all ages. And just in time for summer, Scoop and Dough is set to open another location in South Fargo this June. The owner says the store will go into the new strip mall located by the Tavern Grill off of 32nd Avenue South. Also, we're told the new store will have more flavors of ice cream and cookie dough than the store located in downtown Fargo, as well as some light food options. Family and friends are raising money for a six-year-old battling brain cancer. Ava and her mom are at St. Jude's in Tennessee, so Ava can take part in a long-term treatment trial. Here at home, friends are hosting a raffle, online auction, and fundraiser. Lend a Hand Up is boosting proceeds 20%, up to $5,000 to make gifts go further. The online auction is live now and runs until tomorrow at 3 in the afternoon. And they'll hold a virtual raffle drawing on Saturday at 9 a.m. So if you'd like to purchase a raffle ticket, you can pick one up at Drecker Brewing tonight from 5.30 to 8.00. And for links to donate or bid on an auction item, just head to valleynewslive.com. A couple child care facilities are offering to help parents as they return to the workforce. We've got details of their free offer still to come. Some much needed rain hitting Grand Forks this morning. The streets were wet, captured by our Hope of Economy time lapse. This evening, the radar continues to show rain showers focused over the Red River Valley. You're forecast for tonight and some snow to come next.